Um, so this is a uh, talk about the open embedded patch process and more importantly, how we get one. Uh, I'm Ross Burton, uh, Yokdo engineer. <laughs> Yokdo engineer at uh, Arm at the moment. Um, I've been working on Yokdo for, let's just say some years. I uh, don't really want to go yeah, any further. Than... <sighs> yeah, possibly. You couldn't work on Yokdo before that. Very true. Yes. Um, I've, over the years, I have periodically been the guy that sweeps OE core for patches and collates for branches into something that should be tested and figures out why nothing works and eventually submits a pull to Richard, who deletes half it again and then merges. Um, so I'm going to start by saying this is evolution of revolution. I'm not going to say, well, I'm going to say GitLab once. And that's it. I'm not saying GitLab ever again. We are taking what we have and improving it. There is interesting work, uh, which the LF Infra people are looking at vaguely about, was it activity hub based federated forges that work offline for the kernel, which is interesting, um, but that's very much the future. So what do we have at the moment? Uh, it's patches over email. So everyone sends patches through get send email. They end up on groups I go. It's got a pretty atrocious web interface. Uh, you can't grab patches from it, but they can send emails, which is better than a lot of people can manage. Uh, we've also got law, which is um, basically it's a mail archiver, but it's machine readable. So patches can be sucked out of there which is much better than groups, uh, by a tool called B4. So if you've got a message ID, you can just grab the patches and apply them locally. That's not bad. Uh, we have Patchwork, which we don't use, but we probably should. Uh, this collects patches and merges them into a series and has patch state on the patches and can do a, some interesting things. Uh, some projects use Patchwork quite a lot. We tend not to for reasons. Um, we also have patch test, which is a daemon that will see patches appear on the mailing lists and then do some automated QA <laughs> and report back stuff like, you forgot to do this or it doesn't pass. Um, there's some basic testing. It works, but it could be improved. Uh, for, there's bespoke tooling which is a very polite way of saying, I've got some random script which I wrote five years ago. Um, I'm now on my third generation of patch to take, um, scripts to take patches from mailing lists and apply them to a Git tree. Uh, the first one was I start an email in Gmail and then I have a script which will connect over EMAP, uh, IMAP and grab the tagged ones and apply them locally. And it was, I know other people have got that as well. Uh, so there's lots of tooling, which is not nice. Uh, we also have some paid build engineers. So the Yocto project throws money at the problem. And uh, we, there are two guys at Bootlin, Alex and Luca, who will go through all the patches to OE Core, use some bespoke tooling, and uh, end up with a success branch, which they point Richard at. They said, this has gone through the auto builder. It builds. They don't do a huge amount of patch review in that, so some of the patches that pops out of the success branch, I take one look at and like, well, no, that's wrong, delete it as a waste of time. And finally, we have RP, who has far too much work on his plate and needs some assistance with all this. Somehow, he's meant to know the state of the patches from giving them a review, reading the entire thread on the mailing list, noticing any potential intermittent failures that happened along the way on the auto builder, knowing about some private discussion that happened on IRC, and somehow merging all the patches that should be merged and not merging the ones that have been rejected. Meh, doesn't always go to plan. This is suboptimal, okay? Some patches get reviewed by lots of people mentally, no one else knows about this. So 
Richard or me or anyone, we don't know, did lots of people have a look at this patch on the list and go, yeah, that's good? Because it's simple, it's clear, it's simple, it's, it's correct. Or did nobody look at it? And Richard looking at it in the success branch is the first time it's been glanced at. We don't know. Also, submitters can wonder if our patches have been merged. Uh, obviously, us experts, we know, we know that you have a feature branch and you just rebase it every day on master. And when it disappears and it merges into master, you're good, you know. It's just, why is this a problem? Some people like getting, being told that mergers, uh, patches have been merged in. Uh, the other extreme, unfortunately, is uh, the meta OE list. It's now spamming the list with this patch has been merged notifications. So it swings and roundabouts there. Uh, patches also can get lost. If they fall through the cracks, which happens fairly frequently, it's like you're relying on someone saying, you know, how do I get this message noticed? I've had a few people over the weekend say, I sent a patch. It hasn't been merged. It's been a month now. What do I do? I was like, just reply to the message, ping. And it would go to the top of the folder. But that's not an obvious process. Um, also, yeah, patches that get rejected can also accidentally get merged. Because when you know, Richard looks at the state of success, he's got to somehow page in the context of every patch. And it's easy to accidentally merge things that shouldn't be. Oh, we need to do something better. So, prior art here. Um, Linux is interesting. Uh, they have patches on mailing lists. Uh, they have patchworks. Some of, they also luckily have subsystems. So we, well, I've looked at the um, NetDev subsystem. They have a patchwork and they have a workflow and they have QA and automated pieces filling into patchwork and it's nice. It all works. Uh, they have bots, so you can reply in your mail going, oh, yeah, this patch looks good, but it's broken. It needs to do this. And then just tell the bot to set the state on the patch. So the patchwork reflects the reality of the uh, patches. Um, glibc does something fairly similar. Uh, they also have a weekly um, patch review call, which isn't hugely attended. I, I joined a couple. Uh, but they will go through the new patches in Patchwork and just go, oh, yeah, this is good. That one looks terrible because someone just can't uh, reject that. This one needs a lot more review by this named person in a company because it touches, like, maybe it touches some Intel details. But someone in particular needs to review that. Half an hour call once a week just to make sure they look at all the patches. So... This is just my opinion, just some dude. But the glorious future. Patchwork.yoktoproject.org exists. Let's use it. <laughs> this should be the one source of truth about the patches. It should reflect reality and have all the status of what patches are new, what ones are in, under review, what needs work, what's been rejected, and what has been merged. At the moment, it says there's 8,000 unmerged patches. Okay. We should use the functionality that Patchwork has. This is my local fork of Patchwork, but it's got these columns. ART. Nothing. Act by, reviewed by, tested by. We can set those. SWF, succeeded, warned, failed. We could get the auto builder to populate that. <coughs> Patch test should be populating that. This is not too difficult to do, hopefully. How would you do that? Will the enemies like test that or something? What ones? Uh, repeat the question. Yeah. How would you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. How, how would you comment on that? Like, reviewed or tested? How can we raise that flag? So By somebody from ones, the mailing list? Yeah, these ones are replies on the mailing list. So if you sometimes, uh, if someone has tested your patch out of band, you might sort of do your commit message and put tested by whatever, and it would just pop up. Uh, or you can look at it after, you can reply to the mail with, yeah, oh yeah, this is good, reviewed by, and it would just fill in the columns. Uh, the test ones, it's got to be done through API calls. 
so it's more geared up for CI. So if you have a big CI system, you can inject, yes, it worked, or no, it broke. And here's the logs. So when you um, see the failures, you can actually just click through links and see what happened. So yeah, everything should be consolidated into patchwork. Um, patch test at the moment, um, when it replies to your mail saying, oh, it's broken here, it doesn't do this, it's for some reason not a proper reply, doesn't appear in patch work at all, and it's definitely not a comment on the a reply in the patch, and it doesn't set the uh, test failure count either. Uh, if everyone starts using B4 to collate patches, which John's very happy about, um, then it has some commands which we can extend so that we can say, I've got this branch of patches from B4, it passed, send in the test report, and it can just send in the tested by stuff. And um, finally, we can set state by email using the netdev uh, pwbot with a hyphen. pwbot without a hyphen is something else. Uh, but that lets you update the states and fiddle other bits of patchwork metadata with a simple reply, which makes things <laughs> nice and easy. So hopefully this will lead to uh, one place where we can look at and see exactly what's going on with the patches. There's one more thing we need. We need a patch review meeting. We have enough patches coming in that you can't just expect one person to know about all of them, even with more tooling. Um, I think we need patch shepherds to guide them in the right direction. I was just something spontaneously came to me a few days ago. Shepherding is probably the right word. You're not actually... To be a patch shepherd, you just need to take responsibility for the patch. Say, yep, I'm going to look at this patch, then glance at it, and say, yeah, it's either it's terrible, or, yeah, this looks good to me, let's auto-builder it, or um, this needs to be reviewed by someone else. So if someone sends in a patch to GCC, the patch shepherd wouldn't be expected to know the finer details of the GCC packaging, but they'd know to copy Chem to make sure he gets to have a look at it. And then we can have a set of all the patches, and we'd be able to say, these ones are unreviewed, these ones have been reviewed by a relevant subject expert, these ones have been rejected, and it would be, it'd be awesome. Is it possible to assign patches to the patchwork? Yes. I think that yes. makes sense. It's, it's called yeah. delegate. So every patch comes in here, you can delegate it to someone else. Um, so yeah, it's basically the important thing. The trickiest bit about moving to patchwork full time is figuring out the state workflow, because we have a fairly convoluted way where patches go into the auto builder testing and then can get rejected again. It just makes it interesting, but at the end of the day, it's quite simple. Um, that was, should be simple. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that's my basic proposal, and I was kind of hoping that um, Bootlin would be here at the conference because they kind of are intimately involved in this, but they're not, so we can just say they're going to do stuff. Um, any questions on what I've said so far? Yes, John. <laughs> oh, where to start? So aren't these all problems that have already been solved by the Linux kernel community and we're not doing what they do? Um, yes. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, d depend, define the Linux kernel community. OK. Like so NetDev, yes. Just uh, some of the notes that I took. <laughs> um, so why not use? reviewed by actually in the commit, like, like when it's committed into the tree, to encourage people to actually review it. Yep. Similarly, we are, like there are CCs, right? Get, if you put CC in the body, we'll actually CC the, the person in question. Mm. But we're not waiting for that person to actually respond to it. It's getting pulled in anyway because it applies cleanly. I don't know. Yeah. Um, and Similarly, we do have sort of a maintainer's file, but it's not actually good and not actually accurate, and yeah. that could be expanded for people. I mean, like when you do, um, when you generate a patch for the Linux kernel, 
you actually it'll actually say email these lists and these yeah. people, and we don't do that. No, right. So absolutely, like, yeah. The the you could automatically set the delegate field based on some high level, either some high level mm -hmm. groupings or literally just hit the maintainers. Yeah, because everyone's got a, everyone's named. A lot of the maintainers are patchy, uh, but it is a set of people who should be looking at patches. So yeah, oh. absolutely. Uh, okay, part two. Carry on. I, I got more. <laughs> um, so B, you mentioned B4. B4 does have a, a TY flag yeah. that you can actually use. It's not great. No. It's not great at all. But it will sort of, it, it probably could be improved, and maybe I'm using it wrong, but it will send a response to the thread and say, thank you, this was applied to my tree. Yes. So th there, we, we could be better at tooling. Um, that works. The I was looking for the ability to... Because it, because that works because B4 can turn a local patch into a message ID, which you can then turn into a patchwork ID, so it can then manipulate the state. So yes. I was looking for a way of doing that without sending an email. So I could just say, this set of patches, which I've just tested locally, work. Mm -hmm. Do stuff to patchwork. Yeah. Okay. It's can use the API to do that. Yeah. So that just needs it, It's on. bad about versioning, though, just as an FYI. Yeah. Like if there's a V2 or V3, it'll sometimes respond to the, mm. the original one. It, it's not it's great, not but perfect. B4 is maintained and getting better. Yes. So. Yeah. And then the third one, if we had something that pulled in all your suggestions and actually did it as an example for people to copy, like, I don't know, meta arm, like, for example, then maybe, like, it'd be good because everyone steals, right? So we, you know, get it working, best practices, and then people, like, you know, meta virtualization can copy it. Yeah, absolutely. We can trial it. It could it'd be worth trialing in some smaller projects. From your presentation, I think you may be being a little ambitious. <laughs> I, I, I would suggest that you proceed with the first of your proposals, making all the tools work, yeah. and we'll see how that goes before setting up a meeting. Because one, if people aren't ready for the tools and there's a meeting, yeah. it's very easy to come up with competing processes. Absolutely, yeah. There needs to be a solid process and tools that work. Yeah, one note about the maintainers. Um, I agree with John that could be, it would be nice to have a script that drops you a list of people who maintain uh, the individual component. Uh -huh. But at the same time, what when I discussed that with Richard, he mentioned there are two levels of maintainers, basically. The ones who actively participate in reviewing and merging, and the others who could just uh, advise on the architectural decision of individual components. Yeah. So that has to be also taken into account, because not everybody can actively participate in all the reviews. Absolutely. Um, I could see a situation where you have a, like a shadow uh, maintainers mapping. So. When patches come in, patchwork could automatically delegate to relevant people. It can do that, because you can glob to delegate, I believe. Uh, and then you could have it people who'd actually be good at reviewing. So it came for the entire tool chain stack. Yeah, the, the tooling is interesting. There's a slide which I stuck at the end because I wasn't sure I had time. I've got plenty of time. Um, patchwork has some issues. It doesn't know what release tags are because the kernel list has kernel and then kernel stable. So we screw with it by sending all the release branches to the same list. I've got work in progress for that. If anyone knows Django, because I'm learning it as I go, then help on that would be awesome. Um, it looks like it might work. Um, B4 is all about the message ID. Uh, and the, Currently, you need to like highlight and copy paste. So I added some buttons. That's been merged now. There's buttons you can just press. Um, and my piece de la resistance, which is admittedly a good 10 minutes of work, but it was amazing, is the ability to open a patch in your mailer from Patchwork. I even have a video. <laughs> so yeah, that was awesome. Um, some mail clients let you just take, pass them a message ID. Uh, that was MacOS mail. Uh, Evolution can also do it if you're using master, because they forgot to actually wire it up. And Mark can probably do it. So that turns patchwork from being something you look at and go, whatever, to something you can go, 
oh yes, this patch needs review, needs a comment, press the button, get your own mailer. Um, anything else? Any other questions? Show of hands for people who are going to join the Patch Shepherd Club. It's free more than I was expecting. <laughs> <laughs> so that was brilliant. Yeah, 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 that's fine. We just delegate everything to you until then. Yeah. Anything else? No other thoughts? No one shouting, use GitLab. No? Good. Right. Brilliant. Not GitHub. It would be lab, yeah. if anything. Uh, but it won't be either. The uh, DRM uh, subsystem in the kernel uh, uses yeah. GitLab. Yes. Yeah, that's one of the other examples I failed to mention because I was only glancing at my screen. Uh, yeah, NetDev does a really nice thing with patch test and pa well, patch work and scripts and automation. It's lovely. DRM just was screw this. Um, they just maintain that kernel in that kernel subsystem in GitLab. Um. The kernel has a division into different subsystems, and each subsystem is kind of working uh, on their own way. Yeah. Uh, on Open Embedded, we, I think we have uh, more messages than a typical subsystem, so it m kind of logically makes sense to split subsystems and also decrease the work on Richard this mm. way. Yeah. So have you been thinking about I have been way. wondering if it's possible to carve out chunks. Like it'd be nice if all the tool chain updates were batched into atomic lumps so they were easier to review and didn't had less incremental breakage. So you could have like a tool chain subsystem. Uh, but we sort of sort of have that. Like nominally I think I'm a maintainer of most of X still, which is madness. Um, so you could break it up a bit. But I don't know if it's as easy as the kernel has it. Maybe you could maybe you could come up with some high level groupings and have like a subsystem maintainer who would be responsible for collating patches. You mean a shepherd? Yeah, a shepherd. Yeah. Um, yeah, it could work, but it's all about the manpower. And a dedicated subsystem maintainer is a lot more effort than people committing half hour a week to just crawl through what's coming in and just make sure that everything's being herded in the right direction. Right. Kem's probably the, one of the few uh, maintainers who's like f basically working consistently on a whole chunk of the, of the tool chain. So yeah. <laughs> so, good idea. Not sure how it would work. Calling it. Oh. Thank you very much.